I desperately need furniture. The question is, are you, are you ready? Because it might just be a coffee table, but I have a story I want to capture. One that is told for movement. All right, here's what I want to do. I want to build a coffee table that has a mechanical solar system on display, but I want to do a few things that I don't think anyone else has been stupid enough to try before. First, I want each of the planets to orbit its own individual inclination. Then I also want the sun, the center of the solar system, to mechanically explode. There is a story behind this, but that is for later. We are starting out with rough sawn boards of cherry wood, which will make up the majority of the table. These have to be planed to be square and to have a flat surface. Like with most of my projects, this started out as a rough idea. Almost more like a feeling of what I want to create. And it's then during the design process where the ideas materialize and I realize what it is I'm actually trying to create. This is more fine wood than I've ever used before. Like, even if I combine all of my previous projects. So it was a bit nerve wracking. Here I'll be cutting two thin strips, and these will be combined with three wide boards to make up the tabletop. There will be a giant cutout in the middle of the table as a viewing window, and I'll cut this out before I glue the pieces together. And this is probably also the most I have ever glued in my life. The thought that I had in the back of my mind when designing this table reminded me of early 2000s sci-fi shows, where exploration and life in the galaxy was the main focus. I remember watching a lot of Stargate, Firefly and Battlestar Galactica in middle and high school. It was a time when exploring the universe felt possible, and I wanted to capture some of that in this table in the form of a forgotten space mystery. Here I'm making a guide for the hand router. I wanted to make a recess into the wood where the top glass panel is going to sit and display the star system. I'm not an experienced enough woodworker to not make mistakes at every single turn. Most of my mistakes I can get away with by making them look intentional. Like cutting the table legs too short, well, I make them into a floating leg design instead. But here I'm using the sander and well, that ship is not going to look intentional. And while there's no amount of beveled edges that will make this tabletop look thin, I at least wanted to give it some. The majority of the sun is printed with an SLS printer, where it melts together layers of nylon powder, and the process is super satisfying. A friend of mine told me it's like archaeology, where you clean away the powder to discover your 3D prints. This printing method does not require any supports, and if I ever get to have my own workshop, this would be a dream setup. A long time ago, I heard someone at what was called Google X that their way of approaching their almost impossible projects was to start with the most difficult thing first. That somehow stuck with me, and for this project it is the mechanically exploding sun. It is the most complicated mechanical thing I've yet to design. The idea is to design it almost like a clockwork, with panels that can expand out and retract in, mimicking an explosion. To remove the last bit of nylon powder, we blast them with tiny glass beads. For large objects, this is quite easy, but for smaller ones, it makes you feel like an astronaut. ESA, if you ever need a slightly colorblind astronaut, let me know. There was a time when all I wanted to do was work in the space industry. I even applied to one of the trainee programs. Well, me and probably another thousand people. It's not space itself that I care about, it's the exploration, adventure and the problem solving that it brings. Don't get me wrong, if I got abducted by aliens, I would still try to hitchhike the galaxy a bit. The main component of the exploding sun is the center disk. It's like a programming wheel and it operates with a double ratcheting mechanism. 
which allow it to step forward in steps, and then quickly reverse back, which will be the exploding part. Here you can see one of the ratchets stepping forward. This one is to keep the disc from unwinding, and it's connected to a mechanism on the other side that will disengage the driving ratchet once it has reached the end of its path, and this allows the disc to unwind and makes the sun explode. This is one of the arms that the panels will be mounted on, and you can see that it only goes over the wave in one direction. The problem with making complicated designs is that they are complicated and really stubborn. They just don't want to work. But we'll come back with a more reliable design and defeat this monster. But it's also time to start working on the orbits of the planets. To make this possible, ELC CNC was kind enough to sponsor some parts, and they look absolutely amazing. This was my first time designing for the CNC, and ELC CNC were very helpful with the feedback on my designs and showed me what was possible and not. ELC CNC is your trusted CNC machining partner, offering fast, affordable, and high precision custom parts for makers, engineers, and businesses alike. Whatever you're prototyping or scaling up, ELC CNC helps you bring your ideas to life, exactly how you designed them. ELC CNC offers custom CNC parts in as fast as 3 to 5 business days, helping you meet your tight deadlines without sacrificing precision. They deliver parts way faster than what I can deliver a video. Affordable from prototype to production. Whatever you need one part or a thousand, ELC CNC offers competitive pricing. They use advanced 3-axis and 5-axis CNC machines to ensure every detail matches your design specs. And I'm for one very jealous of those 5-axis CNC machines. And the materials are gorgeous. These are anodized aluminium parts. Fast to deliver, affordable to make, custom built to match, ELC CNC is here for every step of your project. And don't miss your offer, get 70 bucks off your first custom CNC order. All of the remaining gears are water yet cut from 3mm aluminium. My design actually managed to overload the memory capacity of the water yet cutter. To be fair, the limit seems to be around 2 megabytes of G-code. And I then spent hours breaking tabs and filing them away. The attachment arms that connect the solar system with the table needs to be welded together. This is my first time welding aluminium, and it is my third time welding ever. So I decided to practice a bit, and it was not looking well. But it turned out that someone had turned off the second valve to the gas, and after realizing that, I got my first successful weld. And yeah, that does not look as cool as I felt. After a single successful weld, I felt ready for the real components. And with the motor skills of an angry chimpanzee, I was welding the best I could. And I tried my best to not melt everything into a puddle. Now we are in a different astronaut suit, this time bead blasting aluminium to get a kind of frosted surface finish. A side effect of doing most of the work during the evenings is that there's a lot of midnight creativity. Here I'm gluing a small bearing inside of each gear. These gears are what will help transmit power for the ring gears, which holds the planets. Because I want each planet to orbit its own inclination, and each of the ring gears will be held in place by three smaller gears, 
these smaller gears have to pivot and match the orbit's inclinations, which are what these are for. So we have a problem. You see, if these two gears are kept to the correct distance, they function very well. Now the problem is, there's nothing keeping the ring gear at the correct distance. The only thing keeping it is the teeth touching here in the center. And that is not the correct distance. Which means the gear keeps jamming up. It's too late to fix the metal parts, but I have, I have devised a solution. So what we are going to attempt is, is to place these small tabs inside each one of these cogs. And that will force this ring gear to be further out and not jam the gears. And that looks pretty good for a hack. I have made adjustments to the parts, and hopefully the fifth iteration is the final one. I definitely underestimated how much manufacturing tolerances would screw me over. And the latest version of the Exploding Sun is an absolute nightmare to assemble. Oh, that felt good. I was not going to let myself be defeated by a mere washer. Here we are gluing one of the CNC parts to the programming wheel. This is a champagne color. It helps giving so much character to the build. I just love the look. And I'm almost sad that I will cover up the mechanism with panels. These arms are what will be the base of the solar system. On them, all the gears and plants will be mounted. Each of those pivoting gears sits on a different height. And they have a tiny cardan joint in the center to allow the rotational movement to pivot. I ended up adding a second spring to one of the ratchets in the mechanism to make it more reliable. And yes, it was an absolute nightmare to take it apart and put it together again, but at least the shot looked really cool. Everything was heavier than I thought, so I added an extra leg under the sun. And it was also the solution to a second problem I was having, which I will show later. All right, let's test assemble the table. Not all of the wood pieces are completely finished yet, but I think it's best to see if it fits. I mean, it's quite a big, it's quite a chunky table. And I'll move it out a little bit, but I think it will work. Well, I thought I measured correctly, but they're slightly too wide. And this is not a big problem, I bring them back and just reshape them a little bit. Yeah, same thing here. All right. It's really good we tested it. All right, we're using 100% tang oil. All right, this is the next day. I'll say for a single coat, it's looking quite good actually. All right, we have something that resembles a table and I almost forgot about the planets. Some of them turn out really great. And this, this is the final piece. All right, let me show you the story of this table. This place was once an oasis in the galaxy, a sanctuary where life flourished and civilizations converged. Peace had endured for so many ages that war itself became unthinkable, but it was not war that brought an end. The system's sun was dying, 
kept alive far beyond its natural span, and the era of prosperity had reached its final breath. Then, one day, a stranger arrived. His true name belonged to a language lost to time. The closest translation we have is 5439. He promised to heal the star. And to everyone's surprise, it worked. For another million years, life thrived again. But beneath, something else was growing. A darkness, silent, dormant, waiting. By the time it was discovered, it had already begun. The greatest powers in the galaxy united, not in conquest, but in fear. The entire galaxy stood on the brink of extinction. An unthinkable choice had to be made. A third of the galaxy was sacrificed to trap the infected star in a time capsule, forcing it to relive its final moment forever. The planets around it were torn from their orbits, shattered, and made uninhabitable. The system remains out there, drifting in isolation, locked in a loop of its own destruction. I'm super happy with the table. I will probably make an update video on it, as the wood finish takes a couple of months to complete. And also, I might add some lights and some other things to it as well. Thanks for watching. There are definitely days when I'm wondering what I'm doing. Yeah, right now I'm on a green blanket in my kitchen. Let's see how this turns out.